What if I told you that there was a multi-billion dollar music company that weaponized their fanbase of millions of people to search the internet for anyone, any age, anywhere, who criticize or insults them, and that this video talking about it will likely be classed as criminal by both the company I'm talking about and their government. So I hope they like the thumbnail. Now this is a guitar channel, but on occasion I like to branch out further into the rest of the music world, because if one is to understand the great mystery, one must study all its aspects. And normally I'd preface a video like this by saying it's just my opinion, but even then, that will be classed as criminal. But first, let's learn a little bit about the genre of music that this company represents. K-POP! Yeah, a little over-enthusiastic there, but yeah, K-POP, or Korean Pop. Uh, no, not that Korea, the other one. Yeah, that's the one. Fun fact, did you know that North Korea banned K-pop? Silver linings, I suppose? If I had to describe K-pop as an industry, I'd say it's Simon Cowell's wet dream. A totally industrialized, commercialized system where if one group is good, ten are better. Massive companies prey on children as young as 13 years old, sending them to training academies, where an average working day can be up to 20 hours and where their weight and appearance are scrutinized, and in some cases, dealt with via plastic surgery, in order to create the perfect K-pop stars. Then there are the extreme weight requirements. Being fat is such a huge no-no that record label CEOs personally hold weigh-ins for their stars to make sure nobody goes over the prescribed limit. As a result, many stars almost literally starve themselves in order to maintain those super slim figures. Some horror stories from these academies are akin to torture. <coughs> These, for the most part children, sign what is commonly known as a slave contract. That name says it all, really. Contracts lasting up to 15 years of service to the company that only start when up to 10 years of training have been done. Worldwide, the music industry relies on different companies doing different jobs for artists. Record labels for recording and distribution, publishers for licensing and royalties, agencies for booking live performances, and managers to liaison between all of those, ultimately trying to get the best deal for the artist. However, that's not the case in K-pop. From what I've seen with K-pop, these normally separate entities are all part of one organization, ultimately taking away any freedom and choice from the artist. Then of course we could mention the ridiculous money splits, in some extreme cases a 90-10 split in favour of the company. And even the major bands still get stuck with a 50-50 split, which is also ridiculous. And then of course it's likely a split of profits, and you can expense quite a few things to lower that profit before you have to split it. Fundamentally, I feel sorry for any K-pop stars because they're not stars in the traditional sense of the word. They're waged employees to companies who have control of everything in their lives. Now that's a very broad overview of the K-pop industry as a whole, but obviously you can see that there's some very valid reasons to criticize one of these K-pop companies. But careful now, they might try and sue you if you do. I'd like to take a look at one such company today, Big Hit Entertainment. Valued at over 7 billion US dollars, and label of arguably the biggest K-pop boy band in existence, BTS. They are a company who are very open about suing anyone who insults or criticizes them, so much so that they've enlisted the help of millions of fans to do so. But before we get into the finer details, we need to take a look at a word that you're going to see a lot today. Defamation. Defamation is usually a civil matter, and it means the same thing roughly in most of the world. On a very basic level, a statement requires two things to be classed as defamation. The first is very simple. It has to be false. A lie. Untrue. And secondly, it needs to lower your standing in a right-thinking person's mind. For example, if you were accused of a crime you didn't commit, that would be defamation, because it would be believable, and it would also lower your standing in the eyes of a lot of people. However, if you said, BTS have shit for brains, that would not be defamation. It's not a polite statement, it's not a true one either but no intelligent person would actually believe that they have feces in their skulls. It's not going to defame anybody anywhere. Except in South Korea, where defamation can be just about anything that's seen to be unflattering, including a true fact. And not only are facts classed as defamation, they're also not treated as a civil matter, but as a crime, punishable by imprisonment and fines. But that's for a statement of fact. What about opinion? Well, opinions can't be defamatory, but in South Korea they can be insulting. Also, 
punishable by imprisonment or fines. These laws are often used by the South Korean government against rival political groups or journalists. Obviously something that's worth condemning and it has been done by the United Nations. A prominent Korean watchdog concluded that government officials do not care about the outcome of the lawsuits. The purpose of filing them is to create a chilling effect that will minimise legitimate criticism and scrutiny of the government. Now we know that there are things about K-pop that absolutely deserve scrutiny and criticism. But guess which music genre has its own state department in South Korea? I'll give you one guess. In the late 90s, the South Korean government poured millions into the K-pop industry as a means to build its cultural influence, and they continue to do a lot to protect it today. It's a massive revenue stream. BTS alone are estimated to have brought in billions of dollars to the South Korean economy. And some of that money, like it or not, is through defamation fines, which go directly to the government. The scale in which government file defamation cases is minuscule in comparison to big hit entertainment. Two months after their initial public request for information regarding defamation against them, they had 240,000 pieces of evidence. Some likely defamatory to the standard that most people deem it. But 240,000? There is likely a lot only deemed insulting and defamatory in South Korea. Especially considering some of the criteria big hit list, including personal attacks regarding BTS's creative work, music activities, personal lives, and more with malicious intent. Malicious intent is entirely subjective. The unfortunate reality is any negative opinions or facts will be punished by law. And they do send court summons internationally, as seen with Too Mad, a Canadian YouTube comedian who made fun of BTS. And I'll probably get one too because of this video. But how would Big Hit know about this video? Or some random comment on Facebook? Well, they enlist the help of one of the world's most dedicated fan bases, ARMY. Not THE ARMY, because grammar, just ARMY. They're the BTS fan club. An ironic name, because the real ARMY will likely halt BTS's stardom, but nonetheless, that's what they're called. Millions of what is mainly teenage girls dedicated to the cause. There's a great video by John Swan detailing how the BTS ARMY are similar to that of a cult. But it's their sheer numbers that make them a dangerous weapon. Big Hit regularly report on their legal battles to their core fan base on their own app, Weavers. And it's the same statement structure every time, always ending with a request to the fans to use their dedicated hotline to report anything that they deem to be defamatory or insulting. And they do, in huge numbers. A simple search on Twitter with keywords like BTS defamation or Big Hit defamation and you'll find thousands upon thousands of fans reporting just about anything as defamation. There are even fan pages with large followings dedicated to mass reporting people. By the way, hi YouTube review team, you're doing great. Big Hit standards for pursuing legally range from very serious matters which I fully support action against like sexual harassment and actual defamation to things that hurt their feelings. Ill-intentioned criticism, which is entirely subjective. Personal attacks, which they've already stated can be about their music and creativity. <laughs> Wait till you see the... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> And even against the very, very broad generalization of hate comments, and that's also subjective. It's what they deem to be hate, which could be anything negative. Oh, and it's also important to know that they don't have any leniency with this, even against children. Oh yeah, and if you make fun of any of their very serious investigations, they'll report you to the police for contempt. Freedom! I reached out to Big Hit for comment on these issues and heard nothing back. So here's my theory. I believe it's in Big Hit's interest to silence any negative press or criticism about them or their actions, and do so by weaponizing their very large fan base to search the internet for any negative criticism of them. It's evident by the sheer scale of their legal activity that they've invested a lot of time and resources into this. But why? They say it's to protect their artists, but I'm not so sure. I think it goes back to what that watchdog said. I think they used the law to create a chilling effect that will minimise legitimate criticism and scrutiny. 
Their artist deals, when compared to a lot of Western labels, are not good for the artist. Just look at the money splits with BTS. And if a fan base of millions turned on them for this, what would happen? The media have praised Big Hit because that's all they're allowed to do for awarding BTS with a measly 1.4% share in the company. And while that is millions of dollars, it's crumbs when you factor in that BTS were responsible for 97% of Big Hit's sales last year. I think Big Hit are taking advantage of their artists, their fan base, and laws that are clearly designed to oppress free speech. And if you don't agree with me, that's fine and feel free to call me a big poo poo head, because I'm not going to sue you for it. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Bye bye.